This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 185, with Dave Zook. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobster here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today, and in today's show, we're going to look at how to create income streams from resort investing. My guest today is Dave Zook. Dave is a successful business owner and experienced real estate investor, active in the multifamily apartment space and resort community development with real estate holdings in several states and several countries. Dave has purchased over $100 million worth of real estate since 2009 and has over 2,700 multifamily apartments in his portfolio. Together with his business partner, Dave is a renowned and trusted professional resource in the automatic teller investment market. They have deployed over $40 million in investor capital and they are heavily invested personally in that space. Dave, along with his development partners, is actively involved in the early stage planning and development of the largest resort community, Mahogany Bay Village, on the island of Ambergris Key, Belize, which has been rated the number one island in the world for two years in a row by TripAdvisor and is one of the fastest growing regions in the Caribbean. Mahogany Bay Village is scheduled to open in the fall of 2017 as a Hilton Resort. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can let me know your thoughts on Twitter by tweeting me at MC Lobster or by email at info at cashflowninja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at cashflowninja.com or texting cashflow ninja to 44 44- To ensure that you never miss one of our episodes, you can download our free interactive smartphone apps on the Apple and Google Play app stores. You can support the show by becoming a patron on Patreon for $10 a month. And when you do become a patron, you get access to our private Facebook page where previous guests connect with listeners. And you get to access a community of people that are on the same journey as you are, where you can network, share information and ideas, and possibly find a partner for your next business and deal. When you do become a patron, I will also send you a Cashflow Ninja t-shirt. You can become a patron at cashflowninja.com forward slash support. My friend Dave Zook says you can be conventional or you can be wealthy, but you need to pick one. At The Real Asset Investor, Dave and his company create value for investors looking for higher yield returns from real estate ventures domestically and internationally. To learn more about the exciting investment opportunities The Real Asset Investor offers, such as the syndication opportunity at Mahogany Bay Village in Belize or investment opportunities in the multifamily space in the U.S., visit CashflowNinja.com forward slash real asset investor. Gelt Inc. is a multifamily syndicator which has acquired over 6,700 apartment units valued at over $1 billion through a private equity syndication model. Gelt provides its investors with significant cash-on-cash returns while maintaining and enhancing equity invested for the long term. You can reach out to Joss Satin at joss at geltinc.com to learn more. Have you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Are you interested in real estate investing and don't know where to start and how to get the results you want? For valuable information to get you started, visit JoinOps Properties at joinopsproperties.com. If you want to create an income stream of 8% on your cash or money in your self-directed IRAs within 90 days in real estate without finding the property, fixing it up, finding a tenant, and all the other management headaches, you have to watch the private lending presentation at CashflowNinja.com forward slash private lending. The wealthiest investors on the planet know how to capture their wealth and leverage it to perpetually grow it. If you're interested in learning the premier strategies of the wealthiest individuals and families on the planet, you can access your free webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. 
Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, MC. I'm excited to be here with you today. Can you please share a little bit about your background and journey with my listeners? Yeah, so my background is I, I grew up in a very entrepreneurial family. My dad's a very successful businessman, and I watched him invest in real estate early on and you know, pre-teen, when I was in my pre-teens. And uh, he was self-managing some of his real estate. He was doing some of that on the side. And I just, I just saw that that was not something I wanted to be involved in. So I made up my mind specifically that I was not going to be a real estate investor. And um, later on, as I invested in businesses and started a few businesses and got to be, uh, those businesses got to be very successful. And, and uh, I started having a tax problem. And I got myself in a position where I was paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax. And and uh, through education and reading and doing webinars and reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and listening to Robert Kiyosaki a lot, uh, I just, you know, I, I realized that my um, or the myth that I was the, the thing that I was being taught that if you make a lot of money, you got to pay a lot of tax. I realized that that wasn't necessarily true and so it led me down to this path of education and and so i i tell people i was sort of chased into the real estate space i, I realized that real estate uh with a little strategy can be a really good tax shelter and specifically multifamily. and uh so i got into the multifamily space and started investing there myself and i bought a couple hundred units myself and then uh, eventually ran out of cash. And at that point, the opportunities were still coming strong. And, and I started inviting other people to invest with me. So today I'm a, I'm a real estate syndicator. I do a lot of deals with, with partners. It's such an important lesson that you just shared to position your assets in an asset clause to protect yourself from the biggest wealth destroyer Texas. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that's correct. You know, if, if it, and I'll just tell you, you know, for your listeners, if you're trying to build wealth and being strategic on the tax side is not part of your plan, you, you're going to be swimming upstream. It, the tax, the, being strategic on the tax side has to be part of your wealth plan if you, if you really want to gain some momentum. Absolutely. Now, Dave, you're involved in three different asset classes. Can you share a little bit about them? You've mentioned real estate uh, as a investor and syndicator. Uh, and can you also share a little bit about your business model? Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, we invest for cash flow. Um, the different asset classes that I'm involved in, I mean, you know, early on in my investing career, it used to, all, it used to be all about cash on cash return. And, and the number one question was like, you know, what's the ROI? How, you know, how can I bump that return from a seven to a nine to a 10 to a 12 to 15% return? Well, today, you know, that's still important, but what's, what's also important, what's very important is what's this look like from a tax perspective? You know, if you're doing a, a private money loan to an individual and you're getting a 15% return, which is what I did a lot at one time, you know, at the end of the day, you're not making 15%. At the end of the day, you're probably paying about 40% of that back to the government. And now it becomes, a, you know, an 8 or 9% return, which just, you know, when you get got to give almost half of your money back to the government, it just takes a lot of fun out of it. So the different asset classes that we're involved in, you know, multifamily is very, very tax friendly. Um, also, the, the, the cash flow and, and the appreciation is, I mean, you know, We've had a lot of, of fun in multifamily in the last few years. When switching gears a little bit and going to um, ATM machines, same deal, very strong cash flow. Um, the depreciation schedule is a five-year depreciation schedule. And in five years, you can write off the whole investment, which really shields a lot of your cash flow. You know, it, it, it gives you a lot of tax-free cash flow. And then um, the third asset class is Belize. We're, we're heavily invested in Belize. In fact, we're the number one um, investor. We're the lead investor in the resort at Mahogany Bay Village. And uh, so that's been a lot of fun. But it's also, you know, cash flow investment, appreciation, not so much on the tax side, but you got some diversification in there. So it's, you know, 
number one, first and foremost, cash flow. But uh, I'm also very conscious, typically very conscious of the tax ramifications. What I just want to emphasize too is you uh, put a really strong emphasis of not only just the cash flow, but from what a quadrant in the, the rich dad cash flow quadrant that cash flow is coming from. Uh, and they're heavily in the B and the I. So it's a, it's a very, very big lesson. And as you mentioned, if, if you are not strategic about taxes, uh, I mean, to build wealth and lasting and legacy wealth becomes really, really, really difficult. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I tell my kids, you know, I got teenage kids and, and you know, they've got some, the one, the, my oldest has a full-time job. My, my uh, second teenage son has a, uh, has a part-time job. And I, you know, I tell them, I said, look, if you're going to put your head down and just work like crazy, and you don't have a tax plan, you're, you're going to become a, a tax slave. And uh, so I'm, I'm teaching them that already, and, and they're, they're getting it. They're asking some good questions. But, you know, it's true. I mean, you get out there in, in, in the world, and you just try to make as much money as you possibly can, and you don't have uh, taxes as part of, of, as part of your wealth-building plan, um, it's going to be a lot harder for you. Dave, can you share a little bit about the business process uh, about uh, from ATM machines? You've mentioned why you like the asset clause as far as, as taxes and share a little bit more information regarding the cash flow and the tax favorable treatment uh, that this investment has. Yeah, so the simple version, and there's, you know, I've done a webinar, and in fact, I'd be happy to send that out to you guys, uh, to your listeners or to you, so you can forward it out to the guys. But I've done a webinar recently. I've been on the Cashflow Wealth Summit with with Patrick and the guys uh, doing a presentation on ATMs. But the the real simple version is somebody walks up to an ATM, swipes their card, gets cash out, and on that slip, there's going to be some kind of verbiage saying that, you know, this transaction is costing you $2 or 250 or $3. Well, somebody's on the other end of that. And most people think that it's the big banks that own the ATM machines. Well, that's, that's typically not true. Those ATM machines are owned by venture capitalists, uh, uh, private investor groups, um, and those types of folks, uh, private equity funds. So, uh, the simple version is they swipe their card. You get a piece of that transaction. You get a cut of that revenue. Um, that that revenue gets gets split between you, the investor, the management team, and the real estate owner. You know, let's say that machine's setting in a high a high foot traffic deli or or a, a food court somewhere. The the person that owns the real estate where that machine is setting gets a slice of the revenue, the management team gets a slice of the revenue, and you, the investor, gets a slice of the revenue. The, the, the interesting part also is you own the machine. You own that. You own the machine, so you get to take the deductions, the depreciation. You get to write the whole investment off in five years, but you don't have the volatility of just owning one machine. We take your machines, we put them in a portfolio with a hundred, several hundred other machines, and then you get a blended return. And the management company is saying, look, we'll, we'll commit to you that your machine is going to get a certain amount of returns per month. And, you know, it's, it's almost like a preferred return. So your, your check that you get or your ACH that you get every month is a fixed amount per month. It actually turns out to, to straight out 24.9% return. When you take out the loss of value of the machine over a seven year contract period, then it turned, uh, you, you count, you consider the tax benefits, the cash flow, and the loss of value in the machine. It comes out to around, right around a 15.5% return. So depreciation, just with, as with real estate, plays a big uh, part of this uh, tax strategy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, that, you know, people ask me about putting the ATMs in their IRAs. And, you know, if, if they were saying, look, I, I got all my money in the stock market, do you think I should? You know, buy and you know, pull some out of the stock market and, and put it in a, into an ATM investment. I say, well, absolutely. But the fact is, when you when somebody comes to you with with money in their IRA, you can't you can't use the depreciation when it's in your IRA. So the only time I would recommend somebody buys a, a unit of ATMs in their IRA is if their only other option is to have it in the stock market. But typically, that's that's not a way to not a good way to hold um, 
to hold an ATM investment because of the fact that you can't use the depreciation. And, and the depreciation is is really the icing on the cake in, in this investment. Yeah, it's putting a tax favorable uh, investment into another tax yeah. uh, favorable. So you kind of like, uh, it kind of cancels each other out. Yeah. Now, you have mentioned a very exciting project in Belize. And being originally from South Africa, I understand the importance not just of asset class diversification, but also political diversification. Uh, what made you start looking for an overseas opportunity? And what would you say to investors uh, that think it's risky to invest overseas? Well, investors who who think that it's risky to invest overseas i'm i'm on the opposite side of the fence to my in my way of thinking investing all of your cash in one currency or economy to me that's risky so you know it's it's just a mindset it's a it's a it's a mind shift really mm-hmm. uh paradigm shift um you know, to have I, I, I really got into it because I wanted to shift some money overseas. I was educating myself on you know, economies and currencies and, and you know, what can happen. Um, you know, I was I was concerned, still am concerned about the debt level in the US and how we're not being responsible and you know, I mean, will that will there be a total currency collapse? Well, maybe someday. I'm not laying awake at night worrying about it. But at the same time, it's one of the things where if you do take steps to protect yourself and it's in a good jurisdiction, it's in a cash flow investment, good solid cash flow investment, you know, maybe nothing will ever happen. And maybe we'll just be, you know, 10 years from now, we'll be $50 trillion in debt. Who knows? <laughs> but, but, you know, if nothing happens, how could I be worse off? So I, I just look at it that way. And I, I just think, you know what, I, it's, it's riskier in my opinion having all of your eggs in the United States basket. No, absolutely. You have to have a plan B. And to your point, you know, look at, look at South Africa today. Um, their debt has just been downgraded to junk bond status. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil going on in that country. And growing up there and uh, still having a lot of family and friends there, there's still the mentality. It's not unique only to, to the United States. I have to say that, that it can, this will not happen here. So, yeah. and, and by the way, not unique only to South Africa and to, uh, and to the U S this is all over the world where people that live in their country thinks that something cannot happen here because, you know, they don't necessarily see quite the effects quite yet, but they're not looking down the line. Well, yeah. And, and, and we're conditioned to believe certain things, you know, in, in, in the country that we live in, you know, we're, we're conditioned, you know, conventional will, uh, conventional wisdom will tell you that, uh, you know, you, you got to go to school and get good grades and go to college if you want to amount to anything. And, and you got to, you know, invest your, in, you know, your house as an asset and you got to invest in the stock market. And it's all conventional wisdom. But so, you know, you, you, conventional wisdom, I, I got this kind of tagline that says, you know, you can be, you can be conventional or you can be wealthy, but you need to pick one. <laughs> so, so it's just, you know, conventional wisdom, you know, it's apparently it's not only happened in the United States, but also happened in South Africa and, and other countries around the world. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I love that quote. So let's uh, talk about the Belize opportunity a little bit further more. How did you come across this? What are some of the factors uh, that you saw uh, from Belize, the desirability of Belize, uh, and why Belize? I am, uh, I'm a strong believer of uh, putting the team first in, in any asset. To me, the asset can be filled in later after you have a really super good team. So I was doing business with this team, uh, the real estate guys, Robert Helms, Russell Gray, Beth Glifford. I was, I was doing, I was, uh, doing some business with it, with those guys in the U S and I was getting to know them very well. And I was, I was, I was being introduced to some really good people. And, and the closer I got to these guys, the more I wanted to be a part of whatever they were doing next. So. As I was looking for an international option, I mean, my family and I, we went to the Cayman Islands and we were, you know, we went to several different places offshore and nothing really, you know, jumped out at me, the places that we were, that we were going. But, uh, when the, when Robert Helms invited me to go to Belize 
uh, with them to see what they were doing. Our, re- our relationship at that point was such that, well, if you're involved in it, if you guys are involved in it, I want to at least see what's going on. So I went down in 2012 and I was one of the original investors at Mahogany Bay Village. It was, it was basically just dirt and, and some canals, um, dug into the dirt here in this, in this 67 acre parcel, uh, development. And, um, so I, I really got in, invested there because of the team that was there and because I really liked them. And it turns out, you know, when, when you invest with a really good team, good things happen. Um, now, fast forward the clock four and a half years later, uh, we're set to open in December and in, in, in just a few months here as a uh, curio collection by Hilton. And the resort, the part of the resort is also exclusive to Coastal Living, which is part of the, of the uh, Time family, Time, Time Inc. So when you do business with Good people, really good people. Good things like that happen, and uh, so I'm I'm much more typically when I'm going into a deal, uh, w- when it's with a with a, a new group, which is very seldom for me. I, I like to do business with with uh, you know the people that I know, like and trust, and I very seldom venture outside of of uh, that uh, new group. But when I do, I, I'm much more interested in the team than I am in the asset itself. There's a lot of things going on there uh, and f- factors and trends that really place nicely into that region. And especially Belize, uh, you know, we think about the, the huge ba- baby boomer group and demographic uh, that is that is moving around uh, not only in the U.S., but outside of the U.S. Uh, for their retirement. Uh, and then also the desirability of certain uh, areas for tourists, uh, you know, b- beaches and, and fishing and so forth and, and places with character. You know, there, there's a, a number of things that make Belize just a really attractive place to invest in for Americans. I mean, number one, I mean, I, you know, I took the family on a trip down to Belize. We went through Mexico just to kind of get the experience and, and kind of expose the, the, the kids and the family to the, to the Mexican experience, to the, to the kind of commercialized, um, all inclusive resorts in Cancun and then, work your way down through Mexico and get to the Belize border and then go down through Belize. You know, when you crossed over the border with Belize and you crossed over into Belize and you could now read the road signs because it is uh, English language uh, is the, uh, is the language for Belize, which is very unusual for any country down in Central America, Central and South America. So you could read the road signs, you could read the menus, you could talk to people, uh, the language is a big deal. Uh, the British common law is a big deal. And it's very unusual for countries down there as well. Um, it's very similar to the United States and as far as their property rights laws and, and a lot of other laws that uh, we're very familiar with. Um, and then just the market drivers. I mean, you look at the supply demand buildup and, you know, you, it, when you think about domestic markets, you may be thinking, okay, what's the population growth? What's, uh, you know, U-Haul activity going into a certain city? What's, you know, there's a, a certain number of metrics that you look at. Well, in, a, in an international market, we, we're keeping a really close eye on, um, airlines. And this is interesting because I'm going to Belize on Thursday. Well, on Thursday is the first time ever that I'd be able to take a Southwest flight to Belize. Before, I couldn't get to Philly or Baltimore. I couldn't get from Philly or Baltimore to Houston in time to go to Belize in the same day. It, it had to be a two-day trip. Well, this time around, I get to fly out of Philly, go straight to Fort Lauderdale, from there straight over to Belize. So you got a lot of things like that happening. Airlines are constantly adding new flights. New airlines are coming to the market. It's just uh, there's a, there's a lot of exciting things going on. It's so one of the fastest growing growing regions in the Caribbean. You're listening to Dave Zook on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. 
Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the U.S. Our simple, proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Get your free copy of the ultimate guide to passive real estate investing at noradarealestate.com slash guide. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com slash guide. You're listening to Dave Zook on the Cashflow Ninja podcast and now back to our interview. Very, very interesting. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the project itself. Is it, These are lots that you can buy, and then you could put, build homes on, on them, uh, and then uh, are they managed by a management company, a hotel company? Share a little bit more about uh, that a little bit with my listeners. Yeah, so there's several opportunities. One, you could, you can, you know, if you've got $850,000, you can go in there and buy a lot. That lot will have three homes on it. That lot will have a, a management component built around it, very strong management team uh, that that lot will also be in the Hilton program. So you've got a, a, a marketing engine of 50 million Hilton honors members, over 50 million of Hilton honors members, um, you know, kind of that marketing engine will be pointing at your rentals or at your, it'll be pointing at Mahogany Bay village. Um there's over a hundred million active users. Not only not only is it going to be a Hilton Honors Resort, but it's you know the rest of of Hilton's database will will see our resort. So just you, you'll be able to own that. Now, if you don't have eight hundred fifty thousand dollars and you'd want to be part of a syndicate, um, we are the the lead investors at Mahogany Bay Village, and that's what we do. We put two or three lot package together worth you know two two million two point five million. And 10, 15, 20 investors come together and we, we invest in the deal together. So that's what we've done a lot of over the last, uh, over the last few years. Very powerful, the, just the access that you have to the marketing channel, because as you mentioned with Hilton, and then also other marketing channels are now pointing to uh, that region and specifically uh, that area in Belize. I believe uh, that area was rated on uh, TripAdvisor as one of the most re- desirable places to vacation. It was the number one island in the world two years in a row in 2013 and 14. It was the first time that TripAdvisor ever had ever called the same place number one in the world ever. And you know you've got Huffington Post calling it the number one or in the top ten places. You know destinations on the rise. Go visit before it gets popular. Um, you, you just got a lot of U.S. News and World Report. You know, it's called it the the in the top destination to retire to. Um, so you got a lot of kind of big uh, marketing engines kind of taking notice and pointing pointing in that direction. The thing that's interesting is they're not sponsored. Those those things for the most part aren't sponsored events. Those are people given their opinions. People that have been there, tourism, you know, tourist travelers that have been there, and they're just giving their opinion. And that's huge. Now, we've spoken about the team, the importance of the team. We've spoken about the project a little bit. We've spoken about the management that they're, and then also the exposure and the marketing that's basically done for you uh, from outside sources. One thing that's not available in the research that I've done, and this might have changed uh, in the last couple of months, is financing. Financing is not available yet for people uh, looking to purchase some of those lots, correct? You know, that's a, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because there is, you know, whenever you see a problem, on the other side of that problem is massive opportunity. And so when I look at the lack of financing in the marketplace, I want to grab as much real estate in that marketplace as I possibly can before financing comes. Because most of us or a lot of your listeners probably know what happens after financing comes to the marketplace. Well, the, the prices go up. And here's here's the real opportunity for an appreciation play as an investment in Mahogany Bay Village is you can right now you can buy a lot fully built out for eight hundred and fifty thousand three homes on it. That same lot appraises by a third party appraisal company for one point four million. Well, that's not gonna last that window of opportunity is gonna last very long. Number one, the resort opens in December. Number two, financing we know financing is coming. Um, so when those two things happen, that window of opportunity is going to, uh, that, that window of opportunity is going to close quickly. 
Very, very, very exciting stuff. Now, Dave, uh, looking at the real estate market in general, you're involved in multifamily and obviously this project in Belize. Um, what are you seeing out there as, in, in some of the real estate markets? I know it's very a local business, but generally across the United States, what are some of your views on uh, what's going on in, in the real estate market? Well, multifamily in, in general, I mean, that's kind of the asset class in in the U.S. that I'm investing in in real estate. So multifamily in general, it's my opinion that we're um, getting toward the upper end of the buying cycle. There's not opportunities around like there was a few years ago. Um, so we're, we're slowing down. We're being very picky. We're letting opportunities come to us. We want to be in the position where we've got cash and we're at the right place at the right time. You can still find good deals that cash flow really well. You just got to look harder. I mean, it's it's getting harder. You know, when people say to me, and I, I do get into a lot of deal flow. People are sending me deals all the time. And, you know, when when they say to me, hey, I got something in whatever, St. Louis or, or Austin or, you know, some other place, I really – I really think we're on the wrong end of the buying cycle for myself to spend the time and energy to set up a team somewhere in some city that I'm not familiar with. Um, I just think we're on the wrong end of the buying cycle for me to go out there and, and spend that energy to do that. Now we have a really super good team in Memphis and, you know, we, we've definitely got the advantage in that marketplace. You know, I mean, if, if I'm going in fresh into a marketplace and I'm coming in as a first time buyer, I'm at a severe disadvantage. I mean, it's, you know, the, the marketplace is not fair. And so, and I see it on the other end, uh, on the other side of that, I see it as a buyer in Memphis, you know, we're going in uh, expecting a five to eight to 10% um, coupon on a buyer, let's say there's three to five, you know, best and final bidders, we're, we're expecting a nice coupon because of who we are and the track record we, that we have in that marketplace. So I'm not really anxious to go out into other marketplaces looking for new deals and new teams. So I, th- I think we're high in, in the buying cycle. Dave, now one habit I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skill sets. What are you, what are you currently studying and what new skill sets are you currently learning? You know, I, I am uh, very conscious of um, when I go into an asset class, what will that, uh, how will this asset class perform in a recession? Uh, in a 2008 or 2009 style recession, you got to remember we we started building this portfolio. We've we've got about uh, almost 3,000 apartment units now, and we started building this portfolio back uh, right after 2000, very shortly after 2009. And the, the you know the number one question for us was how can we build a portfolio that will be recession resistant? So I'm constantly studying recessions, different asset classes and how they perform in a recessionary type environment and economic stuff. I mean, reading a lot, trying to get my mind around, you know, I, I want to be in position. I mean, it's, it's different for me now than it was um, 10 years ago when, when I was just managing my own investments, manage my own money. Uh, now I am responsible for my investors' money. And so I take that seriously. So I'm, I'm always studying those sorts of things and trying to figure out, you know, how, how I can position myself uh, for whatever may come. Now, Dave, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations, and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? You know, uh, some of the things and there's and there's more but if i had to if i had to kind of um just go with three i mean the probably the number one denominator for success as an entrepreneur is just grit you know being able to do or being willing to do the things that aren't fun uh being willing to put in the work being willing to fight through the obstacles because there 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 will be obstacles uh, so grit is is number one. Integrity, uh, being someone who 
um, folks can count on even when the, even when the going gets tough. Uh, if you got it, you got grit and integrity, and then self sustainability. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to teach my kids to don't be a um, a burden on society. Be someone who adds value. Be someone who not only takes care of yourself and is self sustainable, but but also who can add extra value to those around you. So I would say grit, integrity, and self sustainability. I like that, and you know that's that's one lesson that uh, that I've learned too. If you want the life that no one else has, you need to be able to want to do what most people don't want to do. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you know, to to a lot of folks now, I think uh, you know what I do, um, you know, looks easy, and you know, but it wasn't always easy. You know, we you you get to a point. I mean, you got to you got to slog through the muck. And you got to be willing to put in the time and effort and the blood, sweat, and tears. And you get to the other side of that and, and, and really, um, you know, build up that momentum. Eventually, it becomes a lot easier. But you you got to have the grit to get through it. Absolutely. Now, Dave, how can my listeners learn more about you, your company, and stay informed of all these projects that you're involved with? And where can they find a little bit more information on the, the Belize Opportunity and, and all of the other projects? Yeah, so the best way is to visit our website at therealassetinvestor.com. You can email me or my right-hand man, Tom Burtz, at info at therealassetinvestor.com. And if you email us, I promise you we'll, we'll get back to you and we'll, you know, feel free to email us with questions. Feel free to email us for information. We got some information on our website, but Email us at info at the real asset investor and we will, um, we'll get back to you. Info at real asset investor.com. Also, just as a, an extra added value, we didn't talk about this, but I have a, uh, little pamphlet that I would be willing to send out to your listeners if they, if they email me. It's, a, it's a little booklet that I wrote up. It's a eight real life lessons for syndicators and their investors. If anybody's interested in putting bigger deals together and being a syndicator, and you know, there's some uh, eight real life lessons in there. I'd be happy to send out a copy. So uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to adding value, adding content to your listeners, and uh, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. Well, Dave, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value for my listeners. And it's, uh, it's quite funny that, uh, we, we connected and we find out we've, we actually are in the same a- area, more or less, very close to each other. So I look forward to, to meeting you, uh, in person, uh, and connecting again. We have a manufacturing facility out here where we employ about 70 Amish uh, employees. We build modular buildings. I'd be happy to give you a tour around the plant if you uh, if you stop by here someday. That'd be fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. You got it, MC. I, I enjoyed it. I hope I added value to your listeners and I uh, look forward to meeting you. This is MC Laubscher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Alhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining the capital and investments with the financial vehicle of the wealthy according to the infinite banking concept. If you're interested to learn more about privatized banking and the infinite banking concept, you can access an exclusive webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. Thank you for joining my guest, Dave Zook, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I'm always trying to learn and improve in every area of my life, so if there's any way that I can provide more value for you and serve you better, please reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. If you're not a subscriber to the Cashflow Ninja Gashku newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at CashflowNinja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 44222. 
You can also support the show by becoming a patron on Patreon for $10 a month. And when you do become a patron, you get access to our private Facebook page and that awesome Cashflow Ninja t-shirt. You can become a patron at CashflowNinja.com forward slash support. Gelt Inc. is a multifamily owner, which has acquired over 6,700 apartment units valued at over $1 billion through a private equity syndication model. Banking on the renter revolution amongst millennials and baby boomers, all-time low home ownership rates, and a major shortage of well-located apartments at affordable price points, Gelt has provided its investors with consistent cash-on-cash returns while maintaining and enhancing equity invested for the long term. For more information on how to achieve sustainable yield for the long term, you can email Josh Satin at josh at geltinc.com. Smart investors know that the banks actually don't own most automatic teller machines. In fact, the opportunity for private investment provides stellar passive returns, figures in the double digits, with the added bonus that most of the income is tax-free. Who wants to walk blindly past an ATM and not cash in on that opportunity? ATM machine ownership brings you a steady stream of hands-off passive income. Dave Zook and the Real Asset Investor team have been providing opportunities for investors in this uptrending activity of ATM use. If you're an accredited investor and would like more information on how you can invest in this exclusive asset class that very few investors will ever have access to, sign up for your free webinar on how to create income streams from ATMs at CashflowNinja.com forward slash Real Asset Investor. Jimmy Freeland and Bob Scott have been in your shoes and have used real estate investing to become financially free. They have designed a system to take any beginner to an experienced deal-making investor in the least amount of time. They offer opportunities from basic education, coaching, bridge loan investing to turnkey investments in the cash flowing market of St. Louis, Missouri. For more information, please visit joinopsproperties.com or call Jimmy and Bob at 314 799 Two two four seven. If you want to create an income stream of 8% on your cash or money in your self-directed IRA within 90 days in real estate without finding the property, fixing it up, finding a tenant, and all the other management headaches that comes along with it, you have to watch the private lending presentation at cashflowninja.com forward slash private lending. The wealthiest investors on the planet know how to capture their wealth and leverage it to perpetually grow it. If you're interested in learning in the premier strategies of the wealthiest individuals and families on the planet, you can access your free webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cash Flow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness. 